So in this video, I want to show you how to uh, use Excel to process and analyze um, information for your DNA electrophoresis experiment. We want to take uh, this gel picture here, which is of digest, um, of particular digest. Um, and using the measurements of migration for these bands for the uh, standard, the lambda Hindi standard, and also for one of your um, unknown enzyme digests, we want to uh, measure those up, uh, go from the fragment size, make uh, the standard curves, okay, and again use the standard curve to relate a known quantity, known quantity to an unknown quantity, and use that to work out the actual sizes, okay, in base pairs or kilobase pairs of uh, or unknown bands. Okay, so what we have here uh, is we have our gel, and in our gel we have uh, this particular lane here, okay, are uh, the lambda in the standards, and this particular lane here is our unknown digest. Okay, what we can do is we can uh, measure up the distance between the wells, okay, and the wells are over here. Measure this distance between the wells to each of these bands and plot them against the fragment size, the known fragment size, because this particular uh, standard here, okay, we purchase from a manufacturer and the manufacturer tells us exactly uh, what kilobase size these particular bands are. And using that information, we can then uh, calculate the kilobase size of these unknown bands in our unknown digest. Okay, so the way to actually measure it is by starting from uh, the wells. And so you would have gotten a ruler and drawn a line um, at the end of your wells and measured from that distance okay, to the bottom of uh, or to a consistent uh, area of each of those bands. Okay, and so that distance there, that distance there, that distance there, and so on. And again, also for the uh, for the unknown, that distance, and that distance, that distance, and so on. So essentially, this particular distance here, okay, this has ended up uh, in that that particular row. This one here has ended up in this row. This one, this from here, and so on. And we've also uh, drawn up the distances of the unknown fragment uh, migrations uh, over here as well. So what we've seen is uh, that because we know that uh, this particular area okay, is, or this uh, is the uh, negative cathode and this is the positive anode, we know that the longer fragments um, will be up here and the shorter fragments will be down here. And so this long fragment here Okay, corresponds to this uh, 23 uh, kilobase pair long uh, fragment, and this has the lowest um, migration distance in millimeters. So going back to our Excel uh, sheet, let's just rearrange a few things to make um, it neater. So our standards, let's put that in bold, purchase fragments in bold. What we can do is uh, we can see that the migration in millimeters here is um, it's not being shown because this uh, this column is too narrow. So what we can do. We can either extend the column, um, or we can uh, make this row a bit taller. And so to do that, you just put your cursor between the two and the three, um, and then it changes to the double arrow. You click and drag it down. Then what you can do is you can uh, select these rows, and then you can use what we call wrap text. Okay? And wrap text will actually get Excel uh, to draw on, uh, or, or to make sure that the text fits between uh, or within that cell. You can see it's still a bit too narrow, so we'll just uh, Drag that a bit. So what we need to do now is we need to construct a set of standard curves um, to relate um, these mathematical uh, values. And so if we have a look at the lab manual, what it says is we should draw three standard curves. The first one is the migration uh, along the x-axis and the fragment size along the y-axis. So what we'll do is we'll insert a blank graph, okay, a blank x-y scatter chart. Go to insert scatter uh, this one. And this again allows us to uh, be more customized, cust uh, to customize the, the type of data we put into our graph. So what we'll do is we right click on the blank area of our graph, select select data, and we can add a series of set of dots. Uh, the x values again will be the migration. So we'll click into the x box, select migration, uh, then delete the values in the y box, select the fragment size because that's what we want on the y axis, and then press OK. 
press OK again. Again, just get rid of the uh, horizontal grid lines because they're not very helpful. Uh, select them and press delete on the keyboard. Select this and press delete on the keyboard too. Let's add a few descriptors now. Primary horizontal axis title. This is the migration in millimeters. And the y axis title will be the fragment size in kilobases. And the title of this graph is just going to be the lambda in the standard curve. Okay, so what we can do here is we can add a trend line, uh, which is a mathematical relationship between the x and the y axis. To do that, right click on the series, select add trend line, and then pick one of these that look good. So currently the linear one is not the best fit. Uh, let's try polynomial, that's okay. Let's try power, that looks that looks much better. So we'll display the equation also the R squared. Click close and then drag that to a place that's a bit more sensible. Yeah, let's just reduce the font size here. Excellent. So you can see from this standard curve that we have so far that the mathematics isn't very pretty. What we can do is we can use uh, Excel to kind of mathematically transform these numbers to make uh, the standard curve maths a bit easier. And so if you have a look at your lab manual, what it says is the second and the third types of standard curves you should produce. Migration along the x-axis versus log 10 of the fragment size. And the third one is the inverse migration versus the log 10 fragment size. So let's get Excel to work those uh, for us. So we know we need uh, the log 10 of the fragment size. And so let's work that out. Log 10 frag size. We also need the inverse migration. The one on migration and the units are in uh, per millimeters. Okay, so to make uh, this superscript, we select it, and we go to font, we choose superscript, and then we click OK. And then to make this log 10, the 1, 0 subscript, we again go to font, subscript, uh, and then press OK. Just to make things a bit uh, nicer to look at. Okay, so to work out the log 10 fragment size, because the fragment size is here, we just have to log 10 it and put it here. Excel has a handy function called log 10. Okay, so insert a function again. It's just equals log one zero. Start the brackets up, and then it asks for a number now. And the number we want to use is uh, this fragment size here, twenty three in V three. Uh, put that in. Press enter, and then click and drag all the way down, and that'll propagate that function all the way down there. To work out the inverse migration, it's very easy. Uh, it's just one on uh, the migration. So one on the migration. Press enter. Click and drag that all the way down. Okay, so let's uh, plot now our next two standard curves. We'll make copies of our current uh, graph. So what I'm doing is I'm holding down the control button and then uh, dragging with the mouse, okay, and just making a few extra copies of the graph. So this second graph I'm going to draw um, will have migration on the x-axis versus the log 10 fragment size on the y-axis. So to modify this graph, I'll right-click on it choose select data and I'll edit the series that currently exists. The x values okay, um, for this second standard curve is still going to be migration but the y values now no longer is fragment size but is now the log 10 of fragment size. So I'll select that, click OK, OK again and I want to have a look at my trend line so I'll double click on the trend line itself it'll bring up this format trend line option um, and let's see if there's a better option for us to pick. This logarithmic one uh, looks like a much better fit for the, um, or slightly better fit for the, for the dots. So we'll pick that, click close, move this around. And finally, uh, we should really update our axis title. So this one is now no longer fragment size. It's now the log 10 of the fragment size. Okay, so our third and final standard curve here. Uh, again, right click on it, select data. What we want now is we want the x-axis to be the one on migration okay, and the y-axis to be the log 10 fragment size. What we can see here is that uh, it's looking quite linear. So let's modify our trend line, double click on it, close up this thing. Uh, we can click linear and click OK. And what we can see now is if we can get access to our 
Mm. If we can get access to our equation, we can see that the R squared is now very, very nice. It's 0.9953, very close to 1, which means the goodness of bit is uh, very close. Again, just need to uh, change the axis totals 1 on migration. And this is going to be in per millimeters, and this is going to be the uh, log 10 of the fragment size. If you want to make this pretty, you can. Again, it's just highlight this, go back to the Home tab, go to Font. Uh, this one has to be superscript. Click OK. And the log 10, 1, 0. Oops. 1, 0 is in subscript. Ah, and we just have to change this. It's no longer in kilobases. It's in uh, something funny. Okay, so so far what we have is we have uh, three standard curves. This third standard curve is very nice because it relates um, in a linear fashion the y, which is the log fragment size, to the x, which is the 1 on migration. Now we always want to use Excel to uh, work out the mathematics for us. And so what we can do here is we can get Excel to spit out the slope and the intercept of our line. So let's just type slope here and we'll type intercept here. And so we want the slope of this line uh, calculated and put into this particular cell here. So instead of typing 23.23, uh, which is the slope, we can use uh, Excel to work that for us. So equals, uh, to insert a function, SLOPE, okay. Uh, the known Ys, you know, the known Ys here are the log 10 fragment size. So we select those, comma, and then the Xs. The Xs are one on migration. And so we select those. Close the brackets, press enter. It's given us at 23.23 here with a few more decimal places. Same thing with the intercept. We type in equals intercept, feed it the y values first, comma, feed it the x values, close the brackets, oops, and it's given us uh, that intercept as well. So, what this means for us now is that we can use this uh, standard curve here to back calculate um, from these migration distances. Uh, back to something that is resembling a fragment size. So the first step of doing that is to actually, because this standard curve here, okay, uh, the x in this standard curve is actually 1 on migration. Here we have migration, therefore we'll work out 1 on migration in this column here, okay, and then we'll apply this uh, standard curve y is the log fragment size, x will be the one on migration, so if we have the log 10 fragment size here, we can just apply the standard curve, grab those values across, and work this out using the y equals mx plus b uh, formula for the standard curve. And then finally, uh, to turn a log 10 fragment size back into just a normal fragment size, we'll just do 10 to the power of uh, this number here, Okay, and that will give us uh, the fragment size in kilobases. Essentially just doing a backwards calculation uh, from here to there. Okay, so the first step, uh, one on migration. So let's uh, just copy uh, control C and then control V. That title over there to save us a bit of typing. One on migration is going to be equals one on uh, the migration here. Equals, let's drag that all the way down. Now we can work out the log 10 fragment size again, copy and paste that there. Now 1 on migration is the x and log 10 fragment size okay, is the y. Therefore this is y and this is x. So y equals mx plus b. The m is the slope. Okay, m times x plus the b, the intercept. And again, because we're dragging down, uh, we want Excel to fix the blue and the purple in place. So what we'll do is we'll put dollar signs in front of the F and the 4, dollar signs in front of the F and the 6, because we want those fixed. Uh, press Enter, and then we can click and drag that all the way down, and that'll give us the log 10 fragment size. And then finally, we have to convert the log 10 fragment size into a normal fragment size. So the fragment size we want is in kilobases. Okay. To reverse a log 10, we eventually we essentially do uh, 10 to the power of the number. 
So this will be equals to 10 to the power of this little caret. Okay, this little upper uh, upside down v is called the caret. It's the power function in Excel. 10 to the power of this. And then we press enter, drag that all the way down. And this will give us the fragment size in uh, kilobases. So if we just make this uh, these numbers a little bit prettier, let's reduce the number of decimal places by coming up here and clicking the decrease decimal button. This makes things a bit neater for us, and we can do the same up here. It's unnecessary to have so many decimal places. What you can see is that as we've adjusted the decimal places there, um, Excel has decided to um, plot the decimal places on the graph here. If you want to change uh, that in Excel, the easiest way is to double click on the actual axis. Okay, double click on the numbers of the axis, and then come over here to the number um, option. Here you see decimal places is four. We can change that to maybe two decimal places. Okay, and then click close, and that'll be much neater. The alternative is if we double click on it, and instead of a number which has a set number of decimal places, we'll just do general, and that will make it uh, neat as well. Okay, so what we've done uh, in this video is essentially we've used Excel uh, to go from a bunch of known migration distances and known fragment sizes, okay, used this information here, uh, put it up there, calculated a few things, and used the log term fragment size and one of migration to draw a standard curve, uh, which has a very nice relationship between the one of migration on the x and also the log 10 fragment size on the y. Now going from the migration of the unknowns, okay, we've been able to apply the standard curve, we've uh, inversed the migration distance, okay, uh, plugged that into this equation, figured out y, which is the log 10 fragment size, and then we've taken this log 10 uh, value and unlogged it by doing 10 to the power of, uh, and what essentially has happened is We've calculated the um, exact or well, approximate uh, fragment size of these five unknown fragments that appear on the gel. And so we can say that this 22.5 kilobases, okay, that's the size of this. Uh, and the next one, for example, if we go all the way down to the bottom, 3.4 kilobases, uh, that is the size in kilobases of this particular fragment. So we can see that Excel, uh, using the standard curve, uh, has been a very powerful tool for us to work out um, from a known, okay, from a known migration and known fragment sizes to work out unknown fragment sizes from uh, the migration that's measured on the same gel. Uh, thanks for listening.